together? All right, here we go. Corinne. <laughs> I threw it. I put the. I changed it up on you. See, because she got the. She said yes. <laughs> she got the new, the new American Standard up. It's okay. We read it in your version. We read it together. We don't put it on the screen. Can y'all see the screen? Yeah. All right, let's read it together. Can we read it real loud together? Yeah. Are y'all okay? Can we read it real loud together? Why y'all acting brand new? Y'all been here before. Y'all know how silly I am. Come on, this ain't new. Here we go. We're going to read together, okay? Remember, we, we pause at the commas. We stop at the periods. <laughs> One big voice. Here we go. One, two, ready, read. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in the pastures. He leads me Some of y'all have to say yay. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Some of y'all have to say yay. You had to know it's, it's yay. I don't know what y'all reading. Yay. You said it loud too with emphasis too. I think Marsha said that. You said yay. <laughs> this say even though. Yay though I walk. Okay, starting from even though. Here through the valley of the shadow of death. For you prepare a table before me. Come on. Come on. Jesus, thank you, Father. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Some of y'all, that was painful for you. You was like, no, nah, what are we reading now? That's not the Bible. <laughs> surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Y'all said, surely, love and kindness. Lord Jesus, where'd that come from? <laughs> I love you guys. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We give you glory. Help me help them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You can have your seat. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Yeah. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. Listen, I want to I wanna help you today. I, I really want to help you with this word. I, I feel like this will give you some context for your 2023. I want, I want you to be able to see this word through your whole 2023. And as we were talking about what we were going to do in 2023 and what we were going to preach to you in 2023, we, I, I, you know, I really spend a lot of time studying, getting ready for what we're going to preach. And, you know, every once in a while, the Lord will come and say, no, nah, that ain't what I said. And so I had it ready. D Dante, I had it all ready. I was like, everything new. We got it. We got all the stuff ready. We had songs ready. We, we had the the screens and everything ready. And I just, I just heard the Lord say, uh, Psalms 23. And I was like, well, that'll be good for me. But for the church, we're going we to do this. Everything new. I'm excited. We got Ty Tribbett. We gonna, I mean, he's not going to come here, but we're going to play his music. <laughs> and we ain't going to pay him to come here, but we're going to play his music loud. Uh, <laughs> And it was, we was all excited. I had my preaching team out helping me. And, and then I just heard the Lord say, no, Psalms 23. And so I wanted to give you context for your year via Psalms 23. And as, we start, as I started reading Psalms 23, I started thinking, Lord, I can't, I can't even preach Psalms 23 in, in, in six months, let alone four weeks. And then y'all came along and said, well, we're going to take away most of that time just in worship. But I still hear the Lord saying he wants me to get through this and give you an idea about your year because I believe that your whole year can be summed up in what, is, what God is saying in Psalms 23. It's a picture. It's a picture that David is drawing about God. It's a picture. Have you ever tried to tell somebody about something or tried to explain something to somebody and you realize as you were looking at them they weren't getting it? Like, 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 like imagine like Noah. Imagine like Noah out there, he's just like, okay, I'm going to build this, uh, this boat. 
Now, Noah lives in the middle of the desert, for those of y'all who don't know. Like, in the, he's like, I'm going to build this. Big, it's going to be the biggest boat you ever seen in your life. It's going to be a, three football fields long. I'm going to build this giant, this giant boat. And I, I, it's going to be a beautiful thing. And, it, it, and he, when I build it, then all the animals are going to come. And they're going to come get on the boat. And then, and then y'all know what's going to happen? It's going to rain. Now, okay, boats, maybe. Animals coming to you, maybe. But this idea of rain, it never existed before. It had never rained. The only way God saturated the ground is via the dew on the ground. But I want you to know that God will give you revelation about something that nobody has seen yet. The Bible says eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God is getting ready to do in your life. And I want you to get into such a place that you can describe it, but they ain't going to get it. You can tell them about it, but they ain't going to understand. You can, you, can, you can testify about it, but they're really not going to get the picture of who God is in your life. You, you can say for some of us, we can say, man, uh, I, 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 God's been a lawyer. Because there were times in my life where I felt like I was on trial, where I felt like, and the truth is, I was guilty. Lord, I, we don't got no truth. We don't got no honest people in here that can testify. The truth is, I was guilty. It's one thing to, be, to need a prosecutor. It's another thing to need a public defender. He's my public defender. He, the truth is, I was guilty. So when he stood up, Lord have mercy. And when he said, I'll take it, I'll take it on for him. When he stood up to fight my case, everybody's not going to understand that sometimes God is a lawyer for me. Yeah. Then other times in the Bible, God has been, or, or in my life, excuse me, God has been a doctor for me. Because the doctors couldn't understand it. The doctors couldn't explain it. All of a sudden, I used to have a pain right here that I don't have anymore. I used to have a pain back. I didn't have it. I took it before the altar of the church. That's the problem. We don't take our problems to the altar anymore. So we walk in with a burden and we walk out with the same burden. You walk out sweaty, but still with the same trouble that you walk. Um, you walk, you walk out horse, but you still got the same burdens. That's the problem. I don't want to walk out horse because I lost my voice and sweaty because I jumped around, but I still carried all the burdens that I, oh no, no, the devil is a liar. When I come to the altar, I'm going to lay down my burdens. And the Bible said, oh, let me help you right here. The Bible said that God is a God that will take away the pain. He'll take away the pain. Some of y'all haven't experienced hard enough pain and watch God take that pain away to know that God can be a doctor. So he can be a lawyer to you and he can be a doctor to me. Some of, some of you grew up with your father in the home. So, so you know what that experience is like. But some of us have never had it. Our father didn't grow up. I love my father. I love him to, I, I love him to life. Amen. I, I, I love him. I'm so grateful. I wish he was still here with me. But the truth is, I didn't grow up with my father at home. And there were times in my life where God had to be my father. Y'all don't understand. Where God did. Nobody, had, nobody taught me. God had to teach me. Lord, I'm mercy. Nobody showed me. God had to show me. A lot of times, woo, let me help you right here. There are some of you who are doing it for the first time. And you have haven't had any experience and nobody trained you, nobody showed you, but you just stepped up and said, well, I believe God told me to start this thing, so I'm going to start it. And God had to be my OJT. He had to be my on the job training. Has God ever been your, has, has God ever had to be your father? Have you ever had, had to be your mother when your mother wasn't around or maybe you lost your mother and God said, no, this is the season now. I'm going to wrap my arms around you, baby, and tell you you can do it. It's going to be all right. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep walking towards me. Come on. Keep coming. Keep coming. God had to be my mother. He was different things at different times. And, and what happens is what we get here in Psalms 23 is a picture. It's just a picture. It's just a picture. It's just a picture. It's just a picture. We call this in the Bible anthropomorphism. This is the idea that we use something that you can understand to explain to you something that you could not possibly understand. Yes, sir. We, we use something that you can understand. We say, we say it, it, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, it's, it's like, it's like the Lord is my shepherd. And you're like, yeah. But the truth is, you really don't know. You're just shaking your head. But you don't know what a shepherd is. You don't know what a shepherd means to a sheep. You don't know the, how, how, how much a, sh a sheep relies on the shepherd for everything, for every 
command for, for everything. You know, you know, sheep can't cut their own hair. And what will happen is the sheep will grow so much wool, so much wool, so much weight. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. The sheep will grow so much weight that if they're not sheared, they can't even walk under the pressure of the weight that they have grown themselves. The shepherd will come in and, 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 and shear them and make it lighter again. He won't cut it all off, Lord have mercy. I, I'm trying to help somebody right in here because sometimes he don't cut it all off, but he cut it off enough to where it's lighter for you. It's lighter for you. It's lighter. For, I thank God that he made it lighter for me. The truth is there are times, I was telling people in the first service, there are times when, 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 when if a butterfly landed on me, I'm, it's a, I'm over. It's a wrap. My life been so heavy. So scarred, so so the weight of, of, of anxiety and depression and anger and frustration is so heavy on me that if it, it just is a little fly just goes land on me, I'm dead. That's it. That's it. Take me home, Lord. But God will always, always, the Bible says he bears me up with his righteous right hand. Lord have mercy. He bears me up. And even when I can't walk, when, even when I can't walk no more, God will put me around his neck. The Bible, uh, the Bible talks about this idea that he is a shepherd. That when the sheep can't walk anymore, the shepherd will pick him up and put him around his neck and he will carry the sheep. Sometimes God had to carry me. Maybe that won't help you, but there have been times in my life where I, I said, Lord, I can't even, I can't get up this morning. I can't get out the bed and I, I don't even know how I got up. The Lord just picked me up. He picked me up. He pushed me to my next destination. He helped me to be a father. He helped me to father my children. He helped me to work on my job. I'm just looking for one person to help testify with me that the Lord can be a different thing to you all the time. And the reason, oh Lord have mercy, the reason I shout, the reason I celebrate, the reason I give God glory is because he might not have been what he'd been to you, to me, but I owe him a praise for what he's been to me. He's been good to me. He's carried me. He's brought me out. He brought me over. He helped me. He delivered me. He brought me from a mighty long way. Yes. But trying to explain that to somebody is arbitrary at best. Trying to make it make sense to somebody is arbitrary at best. Trying to explain to them why your life is hard. Man, it's, 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 it's difficult it's, it's, it's arbitrary at best because they look at it and say, well, yeah, I get it. But you don't get it. And David's trying to draw us a picture. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. So those of you, if you had experience with sheep and, with sheep and shepherd, you would understand that, that sheep, sheep need the shepherd. They can't move without the shepherd. They can't go without the shepherd. They, they need the guidance of the shepherd. They need the love of the shepherd. They, they, they need the movement of the shepherd. So what, you, what, what the shepherd would do is train a lead sheep. This isn't in my notes. So I just need y'all to get this. Train with, he would train a lead sheep because the lead sheep follows the shepherd. The other sheep instinctually follows the lead sheep. Now, they don't even know that they're following the shepherd. They just know that they're following the sheep in front of them. Does that make sense? Therefore, but there's one sheep who's so familiar. He's gotten so close to the shepherd. He understands. This is why we get this idea that there was, some, some of us say, we say there were 12 disciples. The truth is there were probably about 150 disciples. There were about 150 disciples. Y'all with me today? Can I take you to this theology school real quick? There's about 150 disciples. Some people say there was a closer group of about 70. These were the learned men. These were the people who, who were learned, who Jesus would sit down and teach. And then that group still goes down to about 12. And these are the people who were like his inner circle. Those, those are the people that you know. The problem is with that list is that if you read that list in different places in the Bible, there's different people in the list. I thank God that even Jesus knew how to move people out of his circle and bring other people in. Oh, y'all don't hear me right here. I thank God that Jesus had to, you know, in one place, he had to move Simon the Zealot out and move Thaddeus in because Thaddeus got closer to him and he could be in the 12, but another person had to move out. And they say that's contradictory. That's not contradictory. That's life. If you count my 12 in one chapter, it's going to be a good. And then you count them again in another chapter. 
Okay, y'all don't want y'all want to act like y'all don't be deleting those pictures out of your Google Photos. Cause I ain't friends with them no more. They was, okay, all right. I'm, somebody's like, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daddy has had to go. Daddy has had to go. <laughs> and then the circle gets smaller. So it's, it's, it's 150, then 77, then 12, then three. The Bible said there was three. They were like his best friends. They were really close to him. It was Peter, James, and John. Really close to him. And whenever Jesus would go somewhere where he was going to reveal himself in a way that everybody else wouldn't understand, he took Peter, James, and John with him. The problem with most of us is that you're trying to take everybody with you to the place of transfiguration. You're trying to take everybody with you and everybody. Listen, I, what I found out, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. Can I get off the subject for a second? Y'all, if y'all allow. I talking to a friend of mine the other day. And uh, we were talking about a preacher friend of ours who, I mean, he used to just, I mean, he was, he was, he was a monster. I mean, he still is. He's really great. He's a great preacher. But he's getting his doctorate. And he preaches different now because he's, he's getting his doctorate. And I said, uh, I can't tell you his name because you might know who he is. But I said, uh, I said, PhD preacher is a lot different than Negro preacher. And I kind of miss Negro preacher. That I just can I be honest with y'all? That's a, I thought I was at my church. Cut the live off. I'm talking. That's it. That's it. Don't cut the live off. They'll cut the live off. If I say cut the live off, it'll be they'll play that video so fast. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Okay. my heart though people won't let you grow why well, won't let that man grow as he steps into his next season at his next place hey, hey, why, why won't let him grow up because he's moving into a new season and new season means, means new language sometimes new dialogue and new dialect and, and a lot of times at, at some point when, when people meet you at seed stage they won't understand you at tree stage I said something. If you, didn't, if you don't write nothing down, you should write that down. People meet you at seed stage, they won't get you at tree stage. And what David is trying to describe to us, what he's trying to describe to us is the relationship that he has with a God that we can't see. He does it by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Uh, there's pictures of God all throughout this, this message. I want to give you a little bit of it. The Lord is my shepherd. That is Jehovah Ra'ah. Ra'ah is a shepherd. R-A-A-H. Jehovah Ra'ah. I don't, I don't have this on the notes, so you just don't have to trust me. Like, pray go in there. Jehovah Ra'ah. When he's saying the Lord is my shepherd, what he means is Yahweh, right? We, he's saying Yehovah. We talked about this, right? We talked about this. Yehovah. What he means is Yahweh is my shepherd. But they didn't waste words. So they didn't say Yahweh in unnecessary times. So they would say, they would say Yehovah. It's, it's the separation of the word Yahweh. They, they would separate Yahweh from Yehovah. Or sometimes they would say Adonai. They would just say Adonai, and it just means the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Who? The Lord. The Lord, really, it means this. It means the Lord of lords, the Lord of all lords, the Lord of everything. And then, and then this man said, the Lord is my shepherd. I need y'all to get this picture. The Lord, creator of the universe of all heaven and earth and everything that's beautiful, is my shepherd. Wait, the Lord who flung the stars in the sky, the sun, moon, and stars, and, and painted the universe and made it so beautiful. He's also my shepherd. He's my ra'ah. He, he's, my, he's my ra'ah. What's that mean? He, he, he just, for them, a shepherd was just like a farmer. It's just a, a basic thing. And it may seem basic to you if you never had a relationship with the, with the, with the farmer. But the farmer's not basic. The farmer has to understand the soil. He has to understand what goes into the soil so that he can get the right thing out of the soil. I'm preaching better than y'all can understand right now. 
He's putting the right thing into the soil. And some of the stuff that you thought you went through, uh, that you, you thought you didn't have to go through, God said, no, it was the proper tilling that was necessary. It was the proper tilling of the soil. And I put you in it so I can bring you out of it, so I can bring something beautiful out of you. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. God is about to bring something amazing, something beautiful out of you, but you have to let him work the ground. Something as simple as a shepherd or a farmer. He says, he says, I am Jehovah Ra'ah. You can find the names of the Lord all the way through there. Then he says, I shall not want. That is Jehovah Jireh. Some of y'all sing the song, but you don't understand what Jireh means. Lord have mercy. You sing the song, but you don't understand what it means for God to be Jireh. He said Jehovah is Jireh. What does Jireh mean? Jireh means much, much more than you can ask, think, or imagine. That's what it means. It means God, Jehovah is my, he, even though he's basic to you, even though he's simple to you, he's just a shepherd, he's just a former, he's much, much more than you can ask, think, or imagine. It may seem simple to you. But it's because I cannot make you understand what God has been to me. God is much, much more than I could explain in six verses. He's much, much more than I can explain in 118 words. He's much, much more than I can explain to you. I'm telling you that that simple thing, Jehovah Ra, yes, is my gyra. Much, much more. Much more than I could ask, think, or imagine. He can do much, much more. The Bible says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than you could ask or think according to the power that worketh in, in you. That's gyro. Gyro means more than enough. More than enough. Like I don't have to beg. Because I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I'm giving y'all this word this morning. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread so I don't have to act like I don't have enough when the truth is my God is more than enough. My God is more than I could ever need. My God is more than I don't have to ask nobody for nothing. I don't have to beg for nothing. The promises of God are yes and amen for my life. And Jehovah Jireh is my The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He is my gyra. He is the God of the much, much more. He is the God of more than I could ask, more than I could think, more than I could imagine. He is the God who is my provider. We used to sing a little song that said, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. His grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. His grace is sufficient. That means it satiates me. It's more than enough. It's more than enough. I, 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 I'm not without. I'm, I'm, I'm not starving. I actually have everything I need. If I look around, if I look around, if I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I am blessed. I got a testimony. Jira has been everything I need. Somebody say Jira. Then in verse 2, it says, he maketh me lie down. Lord, have mercy. We, we want to serve a God who leadeth us. But I serve a God who maketh me. I, I, I don't want to, we, we want to serve a God who coddles us. But I serve a God who says, no, come on, you got it. Stand up. There's this new sort of parenting style. Maybe I made it up. When you see your kid fall down on the ground and you know he about to cry. <laughs> this is for dads only. Moms can't do this. You don't have it in you. You're not made of that same stuff. Dads can do this. See your son hit the ground, he fall on the ground. He look up at you. You already know. He gone. He just, that's it. He bumped his little head or something. I mean, not hard. Look at y'all. Like, call the ambulance. No, you don't call the ambulance. He bumped his little head. He getting ready to cry. And I, this is what I do with Ducey. Don't tell his parents. He bumped his little head. He getting ready to cry. I say, hey, hey, man. Oh, that was so awesome. You got a little bump bump. He said, I got a little bump bump. Yeah, you got a little bump bump. <laughs> got a little bump bump. It's okay. I got a little. <laughs> you, you okay? You okay? I thank God that we serve a God who will tell us, you okay? You got a little bump bump. It's okay. You okay? I got it. Some of y'all, that's a, it's all the mamas in here like, nah, you better go see about my baby. He got a concussion. I don't know, a concussion. You don't know, I've been, I've been concussed so many times in my life. <laughs> I need somebody to just say, you okay? 
You okay, right? You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You okay? I'm okay. He pat his head like that. I said, yeah. I pat my head too. I don't know why this works, but it works. Next thing I know, he back playing with his duck. That's it. He's, he back to his duck. Amen. 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 You need somebody in your life who, who will lead you and guide you. And then the Bible says, beside the what? Still waters. See, in, in verse 1, he's Jehovah Ra'a and he's Jehovah Jireh. But in verse 2, he's something else. He's Jehovah Shalom. Shalom. What does Shalom mean? Shalom means peace. Yes, sir. Shalom means peace. He's God is my peace. Somebody say God is my peace. Yes, when the whole world is going to hell in a handbasket, God is my peace. Yes. When everything seems crazy and breaking all down, God is my peace. Yes. Lord have mercy. Now even though the, the waters are raging over here, he brings me to the still waters that's over here. Yes. Sometimes you got to leave the raging waters over there and you got to move over to where the still waters are. And it's the God who is the God of peace who will bring it. Some, the Bible says, and now may the peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord have mercy. Jehovah Shalom, he will give you peace that people can't even understand because they know your life and they know what's going on in your life. They know all the crazy stuff that's happening in your life and they say, girl, how did you even make it through that? And you say, Jehovah Shalom. He leaded me beside the still waters. Lord have mercy. He leaded me beside the still waters. Truth is, there's two things. Listen, there, 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 there's there's two things I worry about. Or excuse me, two things I don't worry about. Y'all got me messing up out here. Two things I don't worry about. First is I don't worry about things I can't control. Why? Because I can control them. Don't worry about something I can control. Some of y'all just need to get your hands on it. Just get your hands on it. Just, to, just to get your hands back on it. There's, you can control it. You know what the other thing I don't worry about is? I don't worry about things I can't control. I don't worry about things I can't control because I can control them. I don't worry about things I can't control because I can't control them. <laughs> so why are you sitting here worried about something you can't control? Hello. It's out of your control. I'm going to help you right here. Rather not they like you. It's coming out of my control. I just is. I'm like, I am. The Lord said, I am. It's just me. I'm an I am. I know I'm. <laughs> what do they say? I'm an acquired taste. It's, it's okay. That's me. Amen. You got to learn to be okay with you. Amen. And the God who is the God of peace will make you okay with you. That a lot of your, your anxiety and frustration comes from the fact that you're not okay with you. That you wish you was different. You wish you you didn't have the mama you had or the daddy you had, or the upbringing you had. And the God of peace said, no, forget all that. I got it all under control. I got it all under control. I, I am the God who has it under control. And you got to know you serve the God who has it under control. There is a planet speeding through space 65,000 miles an hour. Can I give you all some information? There's a planet speeding through space at 65,000 miles an hour. It is bent over at a rotation of about 29.7 degrees, and it is spinning Literally, while it's going through the sky, it's spinning at a rotation of about a thousand miles per hour. And you live on it. It's called Earth. <laughs> and the same person who have all that under control <laughs> got you under control. Got you. He got it all under control. He got this planet going through space 65,000 miles an hour, spinning on its rotation at a thousand miles an hour. In, in one minute, you'll be in a different place than you were a minute ago. You better learn how to celebrate the God who will move you forward, who will move you forward. In one minute, you'll be, you'll be miles and miles away from where you were a minute ago. That's how fast this planet is spinning. And the same God who's got all that under control, he's got your life under control. Somebody say he got my life in, under control. Jehovah Shalom got your whole life under yes. control. So you start out with Jehovah Ra'a, then we move to what? Jehovah Jireh. Come on, y'all got it. Now what's, what's the next one? Jehovah Shalom. God is my peace. Then, 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 he says this, he says this, he says, he restored my soul. He leaded me to pass, to 
to righteousness for his name's sake. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. This is, this is Jehovah Ro'ah or Jehovah Rapha. You know what that means? God's my healer. He's my healer. He's my healer. He restores my soul. Some of y'all, you don't even know. You, you went to sleep tired, but you woke up energized. Do you know your God restored your soul through the night? That's why the devil trying to keep you up all night, lying devil. No, you need to get some rest so the Lord can restore your soul for what you got to do tomorrow and the next day and the next day. God, the Bible said that he will strengthen you with his righteous right hand. He will strengthen you. And you got to give God the, the time allotted to, to strengthen you. The Bible says he is the bomb in Gilead. It's all the mess and the drama that you bring into your head. That you bring it to your head space. I feel the spirit of the Lord saying, I'm about to heal your head. I'm about to heal your head. You think the pain is down here or back here or right here. But the truth is the pain is up here. And if you get, let this mind be in you. That was all not, do not be conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. God's about to heal your mind. Jehovah Rapha is going to do it. Jehovah Rapha in verse 3, he is the Lord who is the healer. He is the Lord who is the healer. Are y'all ready? Can I move on? Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I'm, I'm going to get through these. I got seven minutes. Somebody say seven minutes. Okay. I'm going to get through this, Tiff. <laughs> All right. Verse 4. Excuse me. Verse, oh, still in verse 3. He is Jehovah Sitkenu. Jehovah Sitkenu. I know you don't have to know how to spell it. I'll spell it for you. T-S-I-D-K-E-N-E-A-U. I didn't make it up. It just, it just said, what? Well, what? that's how I spell, champ. <laughs> Jehovah Sitkenu. That means the Lord is my righteousness. The Lord is my righteousness. You know what that means? That means I don't have to be right. Because there's been times in my life where I wasn't right, where I was wrong, where, I, again, where I, like I said, where I was guilty, where it, it was on me. Really, I made the mistake. I messed up. But the Bible says he leads me to paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It's not about my name. Oh, y'all need to hear me saying it. It's not about my name. It's about his name. He's going to save me because his name is on the line. He's going to rescue me because his name is on the line. When we used to be in trouble, when we didn't have nothing, I would go to my mama and say, Mama, Mama, we don't got no food. Mama, we're not going to be able to do it. Mama, we gonna, we're not going to be able to make it. And you know what she would say? The Lord will provide. You know what she was doing? You know what she was doing? She was saying it ain't up to me. It's up to him. She was telling her kids, it ain't up to me. It's up to him. You know what she was doing? She was putting his name on the line. She was putting, if, if she would have said that and he wouldn't have provided, then I wouldn't be a believer right now. She put him in the position where he had to, you're going to have to start putting God in the position where he has to step in, where he has to turn it around, where he has to fix it, where he has to change it. You, when you take your hands off of it, that's when he becomes Jehovah's sick canoe. He becomes the God who is his, he is his own righteousness. The Bible says when there was no other name to swear by, I swore by my own name. Won't I do it? Won't I do it? Won't you trust me? I swear by my own name. He is Jehovah Sitkenu. He is the God that will lead you through paths of righteousness, not for your name's sake. Listen, that's, this is the problem. We go to church, we do all this stuff. Dress it all up. I, I'm going I'm to get in trouble with some of my apostolic friends. It's okay. Because you think you can be righteous of your own. But he leads me through paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Me wearing my hair in a bun and no makeup don't make me righteous. You a lie. That's a lie. It might make me ugly, but it don't make me righteous. Turn the live off. No, I'm just kidding. It didn't just make me, you don't just automatically become righteous because your skirt is longer than it. Because you wear a long dress and tennis shoes, that don't make you righteous. Hell, heaven. Unrighteous, righteous. Are you insane? He leads me. He leads me. He leads me. I told somebody the other day, I, I'd rather get them saved first in their miniskirt. 
and then watch the Lord lifting that thing. Lord have mercy, Jesus. All of a sudden, God will let, he'll let out the hymn on that thing. All of a sudden, let, you don't have to tell her nothing. The Lord will let out the hymn on that thing. All of a sudden, it'll get longer and longer. He leaves me. Not for my own righteousness. So I can say I did it. No, for his righteousness. Are y'all with me today? Can I keep going? Verse 4. Uh, verse 4 says this, says this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because I'm strong, because I'm faithful, because I know all the scriptures, because of all my memory verses. I'm quoting them right in Genesis, Exodus, the video. Y'all remember, y'all learned all this in church. What was all this? You was on that team, the Genesis, Exodus, the video, because numbers were Deuteronomy. First King, second King, y'all know it all. <laughs> no, what if? No, none of that matters. There was somebody who was dying on the cross, a, a murderer. He was on the cross. Three, three people on the cross. Jesus on the cross, and two, two, two sinners, two, two murderers. The Bible says that one murderer said, "Hey, if you're the Son of God, get us down off this thing." Jesus didn't say anything. I love this because he's Jehovah Shalom. I don't got to argue. You, you want to argue. I can't argue with you. You mad. <laughs> yeah, I'm your pastor. That's it, man. You want another pastor, you'll go to another church. Uh, <laughs> Jesus didn't say a thing. He didn't say a mumbling word. But the other murderer, he said something very significant. He said, yo, man, we guilty. This man is innocent. Jesus said, he didn't say nothing to the one that accused him, to the one who said, you, you, you not who you say you are. You can't get us down. But to the one that said, no, 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 I recognize who you are. I recognize who you are. You know what he said? Today, this day, you will live with me in paradise. Wait a minute. He didn't do none of the stuff. He never spoke in tongues. He never received the Holy Spirit. What do you mean? He didn't do the, he didn't, he didn't do the sinner's prayer. He didn't do any of the things that we think make you saved. But Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Why? Not because of who you are, but because of who I am. Lord, have mercy. It's not about who you are. It's about who I am. And God said, if you recognize who I am, then today you can be with me in paradise. It's not in your own strength. It's not in your own power. It's in the power of the Lord, not by, not by might. Not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So what, so what did David say? He said, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Not because I'm strong. Not because I'm bad. Not because I know all the scriptures. Not because I can do all the stuff and I can preach like the Shekinah. No, no. It's because you, you're with me. I want you to pray for the God that's just present. Jehovah Shammah. He is the God who is present in your life. The God who is there. He, the Bible says he is a very present help in the time of trouble. And I don't know about you, but there's been times where I was in trouble and I needed to call on Jehovah Shammah. I needed to call on the Lord who was there. He saw what happened. In fact, there was, there was times where nobody else believed me. When I, when I knew I didn't do what they said I did. When I knew I didn't commit the crime that they said I was guilty of. But Jehovah Shammah stepped in. And the Bible, the Bible says that God, that God, Jehovah Shammah, he is present. Yes. Yes, sir. He is present. Yes. So I don't have to fear. I don't have to worry. Why? Because yeah. Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Shammah is present. But not only is he present, he's a very present help yes, he in a time of trouble. So he's present, but he's also, he's not just there watching. Sometimes you think you serve a God who's just there looking. That he's not readily involved. 
But we serve also Jehovah, Jehovah Ezra. E-Z-E-R, Jehovah Ezra. You know what that means? That means the God who gets involved. That's, that's what I need. Sometimes I need the God who gets involved. Lord, I, I need you to, it's the God who, who fights for me. It's the God who gets involved, who puts his hands in it. I love that we serve a God who will get involved. The Bible says that his arms are not waxed short, that he can't reach down and pull me out. He's the God who gets involved. Can I give you all the rest of these real quick? Okay, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Ezra, verse 5. Oh, Jesus, you prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Presence of, pre prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I love this. He's Jehovah Nisi. That means God is my banner. God is my banner. What, what's, what's that mean? That mean I, 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 I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Yeah. I, just, I just fly my flag. I just fly my flag. And it lets you know. Listen, you, you guys know what an ambassador is? You ever heard of this person, an ambassador? Yes, sir. Okay, an ambassador, an ambassador is a person who operates outside of a domain. He operates outside of a domain, but he carries the sovereignty of the domain with him. Okay? I know that sounds incredible, but let me help you right here. An ambassador, he works, out, like we have U.S. ambassadors. They may work in Saudi Arabia. But they are the ambassador to the U.S. in Saudi Arabia. But you know what they carry? It's a thing called sovereignty. I want you to understand something. That means that wherever that ambassador is standing, Lord have mercy, wherever his feet is, no matter what country he's in, his feet are in the United States. Wherever he goes, if he's on an airplane, that airplane is the property of the United States. Where if he's standing in an embassy in another country, that embassy is the property of the United States. And if anybody was to ever harm him, it would be equivalent to them driving tanks up to the border of our country. That's what an ambassador is. And the Bible calls you an ambassador for Christ. He calls you the ambassador. That means that when a host rises up against you, he's not coming against you. He's not coming. He's coming against the whole nation. He's coming against the whole nation. He's coming against everything that you believe. That's why no devil in hell can stop you. No devil in hell, no imp can pull you down. You are an ambassador for Christ. You know when you get pulled over by the police, you know you're not getting pulled over by Officer Escobedo, right? <laughs> Officer Gonzalez is not pulling you over. Officer Williams is not pulling you over. The city of San Antonio is pulling you over. He wears a badge that says he is the sovereignty of the city of San Antonio. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Th this badge right here, is we, it represents something. Mm. Lord have mercy. It represents something called exousia. This is, am I, y'all, we just need to sing some songs and go home. It represents something called exousia. That sometimes when the Bible talks about power, it talks about exousia. And what it's talking about is God's power in his sovereignty, right? It represents exousia. That's the power that comes along with his name. That's the power that says everything got to back up because I'm wearing a badge. You got to recognize that the world has to back up because you're wearing Christ's badge. You're wearing the cross. If you're wearing the cross, everything else has to back up. Your problems, your situations, your circumstances have to back up because of exousia. But if you don't know, obey the exousia, he got something else. And it's called dunamis. And there, there's a different kind of power on his, on his right hand side. There's a different kind of power. And it's, it's supposed to get you to respond to the exousia. If you can't respond to the exousia, you might have to see the dunamis. God has an exousia power that he has given to you, but he also has a dunamis power. And you have access to both. Does that make sense? What's dunamis power? Y'all tell me, y'all. It's equivalent to dynamite. So, so, so you got to be able to pray your way through a situation and understand that even when the sovereignty of God doesn't respond, you know what's going to respond? Uh, the power of God. The power of God to move a thing around. Amen. Are y'all with me? 
Okay, all right. Here, I'll give you these last two, then, we, then we'll get out of here. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Nisi means the Lord is my banner. He is my exousia, right? Do you, are y'all with me? Okay, then, then, then this Jehovah in Kadesh. Lord have mercy, Jesus. I-N-K-A-D-D-E-S-H. D-D-E-S-H, sorry, E-S-H. Means the Lord is my holiness. That's when he says he anoints my head with oil. I'm not perfect. I don't have it all together. But Jehovah in Kadesh anoints my head with oil. And then it says, my, my, my cup runneth over. It gets to the next one when it says, he is Jehovah Mana. What's that mean? Manna. That means he feeds me. He's the God who feeds me. Can we just take a second and just honor the God who feeds us today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My cup runneth over. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting in my soul. Jehovah man feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench. This thirsting in my soul. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Jehovah man of feed me till I won't no more. Here's my cup. Fill it up. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Verse 6 says this. This is the last one. Jehovah Shalek. C-H-E-L-E-Q. Jehovah Shalek. You know what that means? It means God is my inheritance. Why was I worried in the first place? When I have an inheritance. You know what an inheritance is? It's something that you didn't earn that you that you got coming to you. Some of you, you never earned it, but God said it's coming to you. It's on the way. Why was I worried in the first place? Jehovah Shalek said. He said, my cup runneth over. Lord have mercy, my cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. Then he said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I didn't earn it, but goodness and mercy are following me. I didn't do nothing to deserve it, but goodness and mercy are following me. The truth is, I messed up a long time ago, but goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life. You don't know what it's like to have goodness and mercy following you. The Bible says he encamps his angels all around you. So you don't hurt your pinky toe. He said, lest I dash my foot against the stone, they bear me up. Goodness and mercy are following you. I didn't do it of my own. Jehovah Shalek, he did it for me. He is my inheritance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God bless you.